Okay, today we are going to do two things. Uh, the first one is speak a little bit about the context and the other one is to speak about Rector Router that is yet another library that we are going to add to our application to enable multiple pages uh, within our single page application that we have. But first, a few things about the context. Um, but we are going to spend a little about the context just to uh, see how it works and when can be useful. Uh, so we have experience that when we need to pass an information from one point of the application to another, we are going to do these through props. And this results that if we have uh, to pass it to the 10 children within a component, we need to pass the props 10 times or more. And we need to remember to pass the props and to use the same name consistently, otherwise we can make confusion and then we don't have the right information when we need. So since this is called drilling through the components to have the information when we need, and context is, as I already started to tell you, is a way to make information available everywhere in an application without passing it through props. So in a way, it's like props teleporting. You define something in a specific place, and from there, you can use it everywhere. So when is this useful? Well, this is useful, for instance, when you want to change the, the theme of the entire application, so dark theme, light theme, etc. Hmm? The colors of an entire application. You don't want to set the color in a navbar and then pass the props to all the components that you have in an application. That means passing hundreds of props or the same props under time, maybe. Hmm? You want to set up once and make every component ready to use this information as soon as this information is available. So something that is needed by everybody, by every single component in the application. Or language. Again, if you change the language from English to Italian to whatever, let's say in a navbar, then you want this information to spread to almost all the components because they need to change the language in which they are represented. And again, you don't want to pass props, but you can do it with context. Uh, similarly, you can use it for some basic user information, logged in or not logged in. Hmm? This is probably not needed to <coughs> all the components. Hmm? Maybe not all the components need the information if the user is logged in or not, but most of them probably need this information. So this is another example in which you don't need all the components to know, but many components to know, and you don't want to pass it through props multiple times. Uh, and also similarly to share data between among a uh, lot of components. Mm? So when the majority of components, all components need this information, it makes sense to use context to put this information in. Uh, you can imagine context like a sort of a global variable that everybody can read and someone can also write. Uh, to create a, a context, mm? context is a hook like the state so there is a use state, there is a use context as a, as a hook. And you have to use three steps to create a context. You have to define that, so create it and make it available. And then define who is the provider of the context, who inject the value into all the components. And then you have the consumer who is reading that elements when needed. So you have, first of all, to create, then to say, okay, I am the one, or I have the, uh, my component is the one that provides the value to the context, the language, Italian, English, that's the single component that uh, update the value. If you change from Italian to English or vice versa, that is the, the element to, to insert in the context, or dark mode and light mode, etc. And then you have, some components, all cons components, they need to consume this variable to read this value and do something when this value change according to uh, which is the component. 
and you can have two way well you have one single way to define the context and one single way to provide a value in the context you have two different ways that are equivalent uh, for providing for consuming a context one is the hook use context and the other one is a um, component that is called the name of the context dot consumer hmm? that is similar to the other one so these three steps uh, first of all, you need to create a context. You create a context with react.createContext and you can give it a default value. This object is the object that allows you to have a provider, a consumer. And it can store one object. It could be complex, but it should be one object. You cannot, cannot have multiple values. Cannot be create context value one, comma value two, comma value three. It's one context object. We have one context per application. And then you can insert them a very complicated object with multiple uh, properties, and then you can also handle complex state. But the idea of the context is that you have, like in the example, very little information that everybody or al almost every components need. So the language. Hmm, a few options, probably in a string. The modality of colors, again, a few options, probably in a string or with a number. Logged in, not logged in information, so true, false. Maybe a few user information is logged in and the name is Luigi and other information, but very small objects, not huge elements. For everything else, there is states and there is props. The idea, again, is to provide simple way to share uh, limited and simple information through the entire application. Mm -hmm. So you create the object and from that moment you have a provider and consumer and other com components can subscribe to this context to change also the value if needed to the provider. And if the provider, if exists at least one provider, the value that is used is the one provided by the provider, otherwise it's the one used by the default value. Hmm. So, let's imagine to have this simple application. Hmm. Just one row and a button to translate the text from Italian to English. Clearly this is very lit, very small, and doesn't need to have all the it could be done also with, with states or with others, but with props, because it's actually one button and the text. But you have to, to handle the translation of everything here, not only of the, of the text in the button, but also the text in, in the header. And if you have other text, you also ideally needs to uh, update every test in the whole the application. Mm -hmm. So you can start with uh, an application like this. Um, there's, again, a uh, welcome component that will print welcome to simple and the button uh, with a, a function to toggle the language. And the toggle language will just say language, if the language is in English, go to Italian and vice versa. Hmm? Just a single, a simple toggle. And this is a state, hmm? a normal state that by default is set to English. So when this application renders first, you have just what you see here, a text and a button. Then you can create a context because you want to make this information available to all components. And so you have another file, for instance, language context.javascript, in which you create a context and you put uh, with no default value in this case. And that's it, just creation. And then from app.js, you can import the object you have just created, that is the context object that has, again, one provider and one, a way to define a provider and a consumer of this specific context. And this is the creation. At that point, you can create a provider, uh, if you want, otherwise use the default value, that uh, is automatically created means it's available hmm, for every new context and um, 
Indeed, if you have the default value, as I said before, you can use it at that value, like an implicit provider available. Um, and from that moment on, that value, defined in the context, is available to all the nested uh, consumer components that are under this, um, this context. Mm? And you can also have multiple provider nested, nested if needed. And importantly, when the provider values change, all the consumer will be re-rendered. Mm? Clearly, because if I provide a different language, all the components that needs that language needs to be rendered. Because if I switch from English to Italian, clearly I want all the components that read this value to be rendered. And this is done automatically, like a state change in general. So here, for instance, in app, the same app as before, you can define a provider that contains the entire application so that everything here can have access to this provider. And the value that you assign to this provider, the current value that you assign to this provider is language that, as you remember, is a, as you remember from before, is a state. So here, when you press toggle language, this provider will change the value, so either Italian or English, and will re-trigger the rendering of the consumer of these values. Consumers can be created in two ways. One is the one uh, similar to the provider. Mm? So in the provider, you have context.provider, and you can have context.consumer as a component, or you can use a hook. When you define a consumer in that way, you should provide a callback function that gets the value available from the provider and does something. In the case of language, it will be load the text in the other language. In the case of dark mode or light mode, it will be change the colors, change the style sheet, change the classes to define the new, to show the results of the operation. Mm. So this is clearly something that the developer should uh, decide what to do, and it's a callback that returns the React elements to be rendered with the new updated value. Mm. So this is, for instance, the components of the welcome and the, and the button. As you can in welcome, you have a language context consumer that gets the value that here is called language, just remember, but just a value, any name you can use it as a variable and then it loads uh, the translation for that specific language and put it in a uh, paragraph mm -hmm. so when it's english it will load will get from this object the english version of welcome the english string associated to welcome and it does the same things for the other elements so define a consumer that when receive a language will define a button that on click will toggle the language and show as text the translated version of the button. Hmm? So you define a con context, you provide, if you want, some values of the context, typically you want, and then you decide who, among the children of the provider, can use and how they use the value that the provider is providing. An alternative way to consuming the um, the, the context is to use hooks that is equivalent to the way we have seen before. Um, and you have to import use context and define it with a context you define. So here in this example is number context, but in, other, in the previous example was language context. So the, the, the context itself, the object represented the, the context. And then you can use it, the value, directly. So you don't have a callback here. You don't have, it's, it's, more, uh, it's more linear, but it, this, the meaning is the same. And as before, the value is the one of the closest provider that you have. Because you can have multiple providers, maybe many points of the application. In theory, you often have one or two, very little, a very small number. But you can have multiple if you want. So 
the, con the consumer refers to the closest provider that you have available. And uh, currently, this, the UX works only for consuming. There is no way to create a new object, a, a new context, to, or to provide a new context with UX. Mm -hmm. So you should use these methods, to, this, this component made like this, to provide context. And you have a choice that, again, is equivalent between consuming the context, either as a component, like in these slides, or as a hook. But there is no way, there is no hook currently to provide a context, only the one that we have seen in the previous slide. And clearly the hook way is the modern way. The context started with the components way, and then, then when the React developer added the hooks, they decided also to add a hook to consume the context, but not yet to create or to provide a value to an existing context. Hmm? So this is applied only for um, consumers. Everything else is in the component way. And here there is the same identical example as before, but with the hook. So clearly you have to import the whose context hook from React. In app.js, nothing changed, absolutely nothing, because the provider is only component-based. But in the, consumer, in the consumer side, you can have a hook, a hook and you get a, a variable and then use the variable directly. Hmm? So it's very similar to before, but you don't have a component and you don't have to return um, to, to use a callback and return an element from the callback. You just use the variable as it arrives and as it updates. And as a, remember, as, as a reminder, every time this provider changed the value, all the components within it with a consumer will be re-rendered automatically. Mm? So these components will receive the new value and they will re-render on screen. Mm? That is the goal of, of having a, com a context like this. Uh, you can have uh, multiple context. Mm? So every single context has a single object in it. You cannot have inside a single context multiple objects, but you can have multiple contexts with multiple provider, each of them as their own uh, uh, consumer. Hmm? And this is a little bit tricky with the uh, component base, but with use context is pretty easy to do. And here you have an example. You can have a context is current user, a context is notification, you can just use this as variable. Hmm? And there is no nesting components etc. Instead, in the other, in the components way, you will have probably here to nest one component within another component, so one consumer within another consumer, because you need both information at the same time. It's not, it's a, you want both information, not one information or the other. And they are in the same either text. So you can also use this for accessing multiple contexts. And here there is an example in two in the two cases, you see, you can do it is just slightly more complicated because you have a components, a callback, another components with some callback, etc. Instead, in the hook way is more linear. Hmm? It's like when we spoke about a sync um, promises versus using promises or using a sync and a wait. Hmm? A sync await makes code more linear in that perspective. But there is nothing that you can do with one and that you cannot do with the other. Same, same things here. Um, if a consumer needs to update the context, is the provider that must update a callback to perform this update, like we have done up to now with the states and with the other, is the upper component to provide a callback, and you need to pass it as a props, as before, or you can pass it as a part of the context value. Hmm? So you can have one value in the context, but it could be complicated, and you can also have a, um, a function with it, then um, context is, is possible. Um, hmm? So Cavo uh, 
use the context wisely when needed and the use case we uh, have discussed are actually the the real uh, most common use case change language change style um, move from a left to right or a right to left language in an application share information about a logged in or not logged in user so something that is really used by the majority or all the components in the application mm? so do not put everything into context small context if you want multiple context and don't use it for laziness or oh, i have to pass the props five times let's use a context instead of it pass it five times the context is for special cases with small value that must be useful for all the application or for most the components of the application. And especially, especially when you start from scratch or you can do this, don't use it to correct any design error that you have made. Hmm? So maybe changing a little bit the components or refactoring what the components does is way more, is way better than Oh, I use the context because now my components are all messed up and I use the, complex, the context to solve quickly the problem. Mm? That's not the solution to the problem. The solution is my components are bad and I should rethink a little bit them uh, in a way that uh, I can use it more efficiently and uh, it's easier also to read the code and to maintain the code. Mm? Okay. And... Uh, I will put on, uh, um, on GitHub the example that there is in the slides, just to show you that it works. That is the code that was in the slides. You have this and this, click here, and this is done via context. So if you, are, if you want to have an example of the context at work, you can have it on GitHub, I will, it's not there yet, but I can, I will put it after the class hmm? so that you can also have some code to copy and paste and not just, if needed, and not just uh, the one in the slides. Okay. Any question on this? Yes. And this value could be as complex as you want, right? So it could be, like in this case, language. So this language, what was this language, if you remember? This language was a state, was an entire state. So this language is this state here. That in this case is a string, but it's a state. So whatever you can put in a state, you can put it also in a context as a value the idea behind the context is that the value should be as small as possible like also in the states actually also the state we don't want a very complicated state and we say oh maybe it's better to have multiple states instead of one big state here the same thing so bring in the context the value that you want but the value could be a string an object an array whatever you can put in a state and this example is actually a state that is passed through the, con the, the provider You will have multiple provider. There was a user context and notification context. So you will have one provider that is the notification context dot provider value, whatever, and the notification context dot provide value another value. Here. So you'll have, if I get the, answer, the question correctly, you will have user context dot provider value user that could be a state, for instance, and you will have another provider that's called the notification provider, notification context dot provider value, the value of the notification in that sense. Okay, did I answer or not? Not. Rephrase it. Ask again. Uh, why 
Oh, here. Yes. Oh, it's an object. Yes. It was way simple. OK. Yes, it's, a, it's like an object. In this, in this example that is made up, clearly, it's not something that you can run. No, it's missing a lot of parts here. In this case, you can imagine that you have an object as a user that has a name, a surname, a email address, some information you want to display or you want to keep track on the website, right? Or the notification, you have five notifications. Or maybe you can add the length of the notification, but maybe this is, um, an, could be an array in which you have the length of the array and then you have a single notification that is up to the developer. So in this case, we can imagine it's an object. Yes, both are objects, clearly, not strings. You said that the um, value depends on the closest provider. Uh -huh. How do we, uh, we handle the different uh, consumer and providers here? Well, here you will have probably a uh, user context of provider and here immediately another notification context of provider because each context each cons each context consumer depend from its own closest provider okay so the user consumer will depend from its own closest user provider and same same things for the other okay Okay, and this is the context. 